All right, today we got a couple of special guests. This is awesome. Um, I've had several folks from Syracuse University. They, get, they do some phenomenal things um, for veteran entrepreneurship and military families. Really, I don't think I know of any other organization that probably does more research on entre- military entrepreneurship and mil- the military uh, family than Syracuse University themselves. So today we've got uh, Rosie Vasquez Mori. Uh, Rosie, you've been on before. You're, she's the director of uh, applied research and analytics uh, with the Institute of Veterans and Military Families at Syracuse University. And we have a research fellow here from Syracuse University, Mirza, also with us. So you guys are doing some phenomenal things. You've got this Uh, One of the main things we're going to talk about um, is the uh, survey of military affiliated entrepreneurs. And one of the main partners for that is the Kauffman foundation and the Kauffman foundation is right here in Kansas city where I'm at. And uh, I've done a lot of work through bunker labs with the Kauffman foundation. And like I said, I think I've had folks from um, IVMF from Syracuse on the show, at least three, maybe this is maybe the fourth time. So you guys do some phenomenal work. If you ever want to know anything about military entrepreneurship or military family research, go to Syracuse university's website. The I, IVMF has phenomenal statistics. You guys do that really deep, deep research type stuff, which is, which is awesome. So anyways, thank you for both being here today. Um, we look forward to talking all about all aspects of the military family and entrepreneurship. So take it away. Well, thank you. I, I don't know if you want to start with some questions or you just want us to go right into the survey and results. I have so to... why don't you, why don't you give it, if you can give us a quick bullet summary or, or just a, a, a couple things about, um, you know, again, keeping it in theme with the show. Rosie, tell us, um, you go first, Rosie, tell us where you come to IVMF in Syracuse and how devoted you are to the aspects of the military family and military entrepreneurship. Yeah, no, happy to. So actually, I'm not from Syracuse. Um, I'm not a native Syracuse. I don't even know if that's a word. We'll make up words now. But uh, I'm from San Antonio, Texas. And San Antonio has a history of military partnership community and such. So I grew up in a place that was already connected uh, with the military. You had Fort Sam Houston. See, I'm old school, so I remember these bases. Mm -hmm. You had um, Randolph Air Force Base, Lackland, all of that. I grew up in in a in a time when you can go in and out of bases and so for me and that that commitment that that connection was kind of right from the get-go uh, when I went to college I think there was just an, a chance opportunity to kind of do research on uh, the military uh, and so I took a I took an opportunity on an internship that really led to my career trajectory into this pathway of research with military individuals. Um, long story short, moved to Syracuse, followed the family, but um, and when I came here, they there there was a kind of a an institute for veterans and military families that just started really at the beginning and they were looking for a director of research and I thought you know what this is something that was perfect for me it allowed me to continue my work that I had done since really since college with the military and it, it just allowed me to continue that kind of evolution of work and so that kind of brought me to the institute I just happened to be here by chance the opportunity was there, but I really did through this research, I kind of found a little piece of home because uh, it was something that was always instilled as I grew up. So uh, yeah. that's how I got here. <laughs> and, and Mirza, so what about you? What's your background and what brings you to the IVMF at Syracuse? Yeah, first, thanks, Joe, for having us on, the, on your show. And uh, I'm originally from Bosnia and Herzegovina. So after the war in the, in the end of 99, I, I immigrated to U.S. as a refugee and immigrant to Syracuse because I heard it was a good, good university here. Syracuse, I ended up doing all my studies here in 2006, graduated from my MBA in entrepreneurship, started my business back in 2002 as well, and had the opportunity really was asked to join the Whitman School Management as a program director and help develop the first entrepreneurship bootcamp for vets with disabilities. And that's what I met now, Vice Chancellor Mike Haney, who was professor of entrepreneurship. And when he pitched the idea to me, he explained to me why he's doing it. You know, I felt, um, I felt a great opportunity for me to give back 
all those soldiers who actually helped bring peace to Bosnia. So it was a good, uh, really match made in heaven. Again, good opportunity for me to give gratitude. And because I believe in entrepreneurship as, as the ways of addressing, overcoming challenges and the way really to the main street, you know, this was a great opportunity for me to serve those who served and really contribute to a lot of uh, good stuff that's been happening after the war in Bosnia. Uh, and then nobody thought that the Entrepreneurship Bootcamp for Vets with Disabilities or EBV is going to be such huge success. Mm -hmm. It turned out to be a huge success and ended up working with Dr. Haney since 2007. Really, he brought me on board also to IBMF in 2011 when it was launched. Uh, did some research initially, actually was there and Rosie was hired. Uh, I think both of us were like the first, up, first six or seven employees that were hired mm -hmm. among them. Uh, end up working then um, uh, mostly on technical assistance, really providing technical support and assistance to all veterans that go through the IBMF entrepreneurship programs. So post-program support, that's what I did. Mm -hmm. uh, in 2014, um, our current chancellor, uh, Severu, joined Syracuse and made commitment to make Syracuse the best place for veterans. Uh, he made Dr. Mike Haney the vice chancellor and Dr. Ha Dr. Mike Haney actually established the Office of Veteran and Military Affairs with sole goal really to make Syracuse best place for veterans. So not only did they say they want to make it, but this was the way to do it uh, and, and hired me to be to help establish it. So last five years from 2015, 2019, I worked in the Office of Veteran and Military Affairs, really developing programs uh, across campus, working with everybody on campus, leveraging a lot of the work that IBM has been doing on the research and, and implement that to make Syracuse best for, place for veterans. So we were very proud based on the work, again, based on the data we collected from IBMF or obtained from IBMF and based on the work we've done on campus, our military times has ranked us number one private school best for veterans. So that was great. And then um, while I was doing all this stuff, I also did my PhD at Syracuse University, focusing on entrepreneurship and uh, disabilities. Uh, and because of my work, most of my sample came from veteran veterans with disabilities. Uh, so I finished my PhD in 2019, uh, and then this opportunity came about uh, for the National Survey of Military Affiliate Entrepreneurs, which was also a great uh, fit for me because it kind of covers both passions, the military veterans, mm -hmm. as well as entrepreneurship. And now we have the opportunity to really, uh, you know, establish a, a national database that can continuously improve the entrepreneurial outcomes for veterans and military connected families. That's awesome. I love, I love uh, first generation immigrant stories because I, I truly think, personally think that first generation immigrants to, to the U.S. make the best American citizens. So, because you had to go through a lot to get here. So, I appreciate that. Um, so, tell us uh, just a quick highlight. You mentioned the entrepreneurship, um, of the, the, the Veterans Boot Camp. Um, I, I didn't get the name quite right, but you mentioned that program. What are, what are some of the highlight programs that you guys are currently um, supporting and running there at Syracuse? So Syracuse has, a, we call it an arsenal, which is really a huge portfolio of various uh, entrepreneurship programs because the Entrepreneurship Bootcamp for Vets with Disabilities, or EBV, really focuses on vets with service-connected disability. It's high-end program. It's offered at Syracuse and other eight universities in the nation. You know, and, and we have about 25 to 30 vets with disabilities go through the program. Everything is free for them. So it's very niche program. Then we have the uh, of that program. Can you can you give a little more detail on that? Like how long yeah. how long does the program take place? And so the program is um, is it's it's three weeks online first. So we have this cohort of, oh. of, of 25, 30 rats who go online for three weeks. Kind of for those who don't know anything about entrepreneurship, it's a great intro. For those who know, it's a great review. But uh, very important is that actually they build a community. They build a a, a you know camaraderie online. Okay. And then what we do is after they finish the three weeks online, a week later, we fly them in to Syracuse, depending which school they're attending. Again, free, they join, and then they go through this uh, literally a boot camp from 8 a.m. to 10 p.m. It's the programming. There's some fun in between, of course, <laughs> but it's really learning everything about business. And then and at the end of the eight day, they have to do the venture pitch in front of real judges, real investors, who also provide them feedback. Once they're done with that, then they go into the, we call it the, 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 the third phase, 
which is really forever going. And that's where the technical assistance program that I was I mentioned previously I was doing, it still exists and it's still being offered, but we provide mentoring, we provide technical assistance with I don't know, bookkeeping, legal assistance, for example, DLA Piper, the largest law firm in the world, provides up to 40 hours of free services. So a lot of these companies that want to serve those who serve a part of the portfolio and continuously helping our veterans. For what I remember, Rosie can tell better because um, one amazing thing we did is we started collecting data from the beginning and Rosie has actually helped establish a great database. But uh, within six months of graduating from EBV, I believe 66% vets start a business and today 91% of them still in business. Um, uh, that's also, a great statistic, yeah. There was, I think they're even better now because Rosie knows she collects that information, <laughs> she oversees that. Uh, but that was leveraged then to create the Women Ignite, Veteran Women Ignite Spirit Entrepreneurship Program, which is also three phase. You have a three week online and then instead of eight days, we do three days. Uh, but it's, it's not at Syracuse, it's, it's every time they switch it to another major metropolitan area in the US. Mm -hmm. and instead of putting 25 to 30 veterans, we put 250 to 300 women uh, veterans through the program. And that, that usually, depending on the, on the funding, but usually we offer it, used to offer it every, almost every quarter. Uh, that one is V-wise, like as in V and then W-I-S-E. -E. Yes. That's awesome. Veteran women ignite the spirit of entrepreneurship. Great. And then also, uh, from what I remember, um, when, the, when DOD was looking to um, change the, the transition assistance program, Mm -hmm. uh, they reached out to us and helped and asked us to develop. Because uh, remember, at that time, the, the TAP used to be vocational training, employment, sorry, employment, education, and military career. And then they added vocational training and asked us to develop the entrepreneurship training. Yeah. All those were transitioning. Uh, and that's where the, the boost to business was developed. Again, similar model, three weeks online, or depending again what stage you are, and also in, in person training. And then or service support through the Small Business Administration uh, collaboration that IBMF has. That's there's right. also Veterans Edge and, and, and really yeah. several other programs that are also cater to veterans who already have existing businesses who are looking to move their, I don't know, if they hit the ceiling, how do we move from the half million gross sales to five, six million? That's Veterans Edge. It's one yeah. of those examples that we have. <clears throat> As Mirza had mentioned, you know, through the IVMF and under this, we have this arsenal program. And I, through that program, we have various different programs and Mirza has definitely described a handful of them um, that are available, but, but also through conferences and networking opportunities as well. I know with um, Boots to Business, we've had over 70,000 transitioning service members and their families go through that, pers uh, that program. For our VWISE program, we've had over 3,000 um, aspiring uh, entrepreneurs really go through that program, but various different um, programs that are available, really trying, whether you're at startup or, you know, growing your, really, we have a program that's tailored for the individual. And so definitely have a, a number of different uh, opportunities available uh, yeah, through, uh, through the Institute for Veterans and Military Families. That's awesome. All right, we're going to take a quick break and we'll be right back. All right, we're back talking with uh, Rosie and Mirza from the Institute of Veterans for Military Affairs, IVMF, at Syracuse University. So, Rosie, before the break, um, you, were, you were throwing out some really good stats. One good thing you guys have done there at Syracuse, you've collected good data and analytics from the very beginning. So, you are where, if, if I ever want to know anything about veteran entrepreneurship, I go to Syracuse University and look up some statistics and cause you guys get some phenomenal data and you do some great research. So um, in line with um, what you guys do there with data and research, some of the things you do, you know, some of the ways you get that information is through surveys and one of your new surveys that it has come out recently is the, the survey for military affiliated entrepreneurs, which we wanted to talk about today. So, Talk a little bit about data collection and the, some of the research you, you do and how the surveys play into that. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think you've probably heard it through various uh, individuals previously, but IVMF hearts data, and that's absolutely true. And I think anybody on our team really has an appreciation and understanding, not just of our, our own programmatic data, but also the data that is available on a national landscape, you know. 
um, we can probably speak very uh, confidently about our programs and our impacts. And I know Mirza has mentioned some numbers, but we constantly got asked questions about, okay, but like, how does this relate to the general veteran trend and things like that? And so we, we started, you know, and again, we've been doing entrepreneurship research since the beginning, really since 2007, to be honest, through um, our programs, but we really started to try to get an understanding of just national trends under, you know, things like that. And what we found was it, ultimately there was a huge data gap as it relates to military affiliated entrepreneurs out there um, that really can lead to our understanding of, of just what we're seeing in the space. So although we collect information on a programmatic level and do it very well, we wanted to extend that and really understand it on a national perspective and a landscape. And that's really the, the genesis of this program and why it started. I'm gonna kick it off to Mirza to kind of speak more to that. Certainly, thanks Rosie. Uh, We've been doing a lot of presentations and people come to us often asking for information about veteran entrepreneurship. Um, and usually if you look at any of the research that's existing, it uses uh, national data on entrepreneurship that also includes veterans, but does not really focus on veterans. Furthermore, a lot of that information comes from census data, VA, that's usually collected every five years, which really does not tell us what's going on. And Look at this example of now with COVID, right? The, the data that was published last year, it's already obsolete because mm -hmm. a lot of the challenges and barriers that veterans and any other entrepreneur really experiences are completely different, right? COVID has changed the landscape. And that's where we, where, we, where we believe that we have to collect data that's uh, you know, on an annual basis to really see if Joe has a business, right? How's he doing this year? What are the challenges he faces next year? What other challenges he might experience in three years from now and so on? So it can really help practitioners, policymakers, uh, and as we researchers also understand really how do we better assist veteran entrepreneurs. Another thing also that uh, from my experiences and, and, and research, uh, if you look at it, the SBA data, uh, about 50% 50, 50 of all veterans from World War II used to be veteran entrepreneurs. Mm. Uh, veterans in 2005, 15% uh, of veterans used to be also entrepreneurs in, in 2005. Today, that number is down to 11%. Right. So what's the reason? Why, why is it declining? And this research should be able to inform us what are the reasons, what are the barriers, what are the challenges, and hopefully we can then swing that pendulum around and help increase veteran entrepreneurship because it makes sense. Veteran entrepreneurship makes sense. Um, a lot of the military skills that everybody learns during boot camp, military training, uh, right? The, the, everything you really do, it's easily transferable into entrepreneurship. And, our data right now that we collected actually indicates 93% of all veterans said that the skills they learned in military helped them with their business, startup and growth of their business. Uh, one thing also we identified that a lot of unfortunately have not learned how to transfer the skills in terms of collecting intelligence into market research and marketing skills. They have it, it's just that now we know it, we know what the challenges are, now we can tell the technical assistance uh, service providers such as SBDC and others, hey, they have collected the data, they know how to collect intelligence. They also have used the intelligence to make strategic, uh, strategic missions and develop tactics, translate that, help them translate those skills into entrepreneurship, which is right. called market research, developing strategy, market to go market stra <coughs> strategy and tactics are now called pricing, pr promotions, placement and product development, right? So sorry for <clears throat> yeah so um one thing that we talk about on the show quite a bit is um the difference between hard skills and soft skills some of those hard skills are missing from the veterans like um accounting the cpa degree uh the mba might be missing um the six sigma bookkeeping all those like hard you know things that you can tabulate and put on a resume. Um, but what vet, where veterans do very well is in the soft skill arena, leadership, motivation, discipline, stick to Like I'm, we're, we're not going to quit. <laughs> um, okay. and some of those soft skills are the hardest things to find, uh, especially so. And oftentimes the things that make veterans great entrepreneurs are also the things that make veterans great employees. 
it's, it's a lot of those soft skills. Um, but w- in speaking with about blind spots, what kind of things have you all noticed um, as far as veterans are concerned, where most of their blind spots are or where their struggling points uh, typically are? What are the things that they have the most trouble with in that transition? Well, uh, let's focus on the, uh, there's a couple of things, actually two challenges. There's a transition from military to civilian life challenges that they're experiencing. It also contributes that it's also entrepreneurship. Mm-hmm. Um, they struggle definitely with almost half struggle of really getting adjusted to civilian life. And it also causes problems with, uh, in, in the entrepreneurial ventures or endeavors. A lot of them lack that social capital, right? If I'm here in Syracuse, I have, if I start a business now, I know where to go. I don't know who, who to reach out. I can talk to my friends and family members. I have a large network. I have a large social capital. My entrepreneurial ecosystem is very rich. However, if you just left the service, let's say you are from Alaska, New York, and you served in Fort Drum, and you decided, okay, I'm moving down to Alexandria Bay, you don't have social capital in Alexandria Bay, right? So it's going to be very difficult and challenging for you first to just acclimate and adjust it to the civilian life that you just joined, and then also the entrepreneurial ecosystem. It's not really there. So those are some of the major, like it's one of the major challenges we observe that veterans have as they transition. So based on a study also, you show that the higher number of deployments a veteran has, the smaller social capital he has, which is really common sense, right? Mm -hmm. But now we have a lot of that information, uh, that data present. It's not just Dr. Mike Haney going up on, on, on the microphone and speaking to the audience saying, look, these are the challenges we observe. This is now veterans telling us what are the challenges they have. And now we can use the data to hopefully address those challenges. Yeah. And, uh, and I just want to add to it because I'm going to kind of bring it back to a broad sense. But yeah, I mean, I think what we know really, not just from the study, but from a collective, because we do various different research, transition is difficulty, right? And that networking and mentoring, especially because of the mobility of the military lifestyle, may be different for veterans than it is for some, you know, for general population. In some cases, people stay in the same city state that they've always been and they will always be there. But veterans and and military families move a lot. uh, And that's because of the military, right? And so that networking and that connection is just a little different. And that is unique. And so you see it in the entrepreneurship, you see it in the employment, and you certainly see it in various different realms as well. Um, But helping to network navigate and providing that is certainly the key to success for any, um, really any endeavor, uh, entrepreneurship, employment related in any aspect. Yeah. Can yeah, you talk specifically, uh, I was going to ask specifically about the survey um, of uh, military affiliated entrepreneurs. Can you talk some on some specific details about the survey? So the survey has been uh, developed, it has about 211 questions and it covers really for motivations, barriers, resources, aspirations. Uh, We also included some of the uh, academic research, we call them instrument, survey instrument or scales that measure things such as self-efficacy. We're gonna include more, we also included the questions. Uh, Actually, when we started the, the survey, we started in March, we collected a good amount of data and then COVID kicked in. We stopped it and then included several COVID-related questions to also understand really how COVID has been impacting our veteran military community and then also the seminary. So we have a good comparison also before, before and after that. Um, and, we, and we can definitely also, the, uh, we're going to continue doing that survey. So the goal of the survey is to ask similar questions for the participate this year, next year, and, and moving forward, but then also include new people to kind of repeat those questions to understand, to expand that, to, to have a better, um, uh, wider po- sample sample of veteran and com- uh-huh. military connected entrepreneurs. Yeah. So I, I um, thanks thanks for sending me the link to the survey. We'll try to put that uh, link in our show notes for this episode if you're listening. And if if somebody wants to, um, where would somebody find this survey on the Syracuse website, or where's the best place to go find it? It, it is or this but that's this link is fine um, and I can say it's basically if you just if you google uh, national survey of military affiliate entrepreneurs okay. it should be the first thing that pops up as well yeah uh, and then also feel, 
reach out to me and Rosie. My email address is M as a Mary, T as a Tom, I, H, I, C, at S, Y, R, that E, D, U. Yeah, the one thing I, I, I just want to add, yeah, I mean, you can access the, the, find, the information about the survey, the report, and certainly some data highlights about it through um, the link, through our website, um, ivmf.syracuse.edu. Um, you can Google it or, or contact us. Uh, the one thing that I do want to stress is that this isn't going to be just a survey that we did one time. Um, this, we're not a one and done shop here. Um, it is our effort really to understand and monitor these issues and these trends. So we're, we've done a, a bit of data collection. This is the result of, of this year, but we're gonna be doing this again next year. We're gonna be able to compare from year one to year two, um, and we're really gonna be talking about it in a way that nobody else has talked about it um, in a consistent manner as well. And, and I may add, uh, we're gonna make this um, database publicly available so practitioners, researchers, um, policymakers will have access to it. So let's say the SBA in, in Texas is trying to improve the services in, in, in Texas. They can tap into this database and see really what are the specific challenges for Texas-based veteran entrepreneurs. Um, but then also what I love about it is, as an academic researcher is that as, as more and more academic researchers use and publish information about veteran entrepreneurship, it's going to become a thing into, into school management. And now you're going to have professors teaching other students about veteran entrepreneurship. So hopefully in five, 10 years from now, you're going to have bankers. You're going to have people that provide technical assistance that serve veterans, understand their challenges and barriers, understand that really veteran entrepreneur, entrepreneurship really makes sense for veterans and understand like, look, there are these resources and I know how to serve them better. Yeah. So, so if um, um... I want to hear what both of you have to say on this. If you're talking to somebody who's still in the military, getting out soon, or a recent veteran, you know, with everything you know from a research perspective and some of the programs you guys are putting on there, somebody or, you know, or a military spouse, somebody that's look, from the military community, someone that's looking to get started in entrepreneurship, what are some of the big immediate things that come to mind in terms of advice? So I have to be uh, biased by looking to the IVMF programs that we have. Uh -huh. the, if you're in service already, look at the Boost of Business, definitely take it. Mm -hmm. uh, it's free to you. It's a great resource. Uh, look about entrepreneurship. Uh, also, don't chase the money. Uh, what we see in entrepreneurship, usually the ones that are successful are the ones that follow their passions. So whatever passion you have, focus on that passion and, and try to create value. Uh, oh. def so definitely look, look out for the IBM resources, but there's also SBA related resources such as Small Business Development Center, the VBOX, Veteran Business Outreach Centers. All of them have amazing resources. So don't be shy. Don't do it alone. There's nothing wrong about asking for assistance. And that's one thing we've seen from veterans that they try to do it themselves. They don't want to ask for assistance. They're shy. No, these resources are here for you and they can't wait to help you and assist you grow your business. And they're free. I, don't, I know you mentioned free, but I want to emphasize that they're all free, like free travel, room and board on the, on the in-person stuff. Yeah. And, and many of them, uh, military spouses are eligible and the VWISE is, is for women only. So, um, there, you have to take advantage. And oftentimes, you know, for somebody that's still in, you can take leave or they will grant you, uh, TPAP, TAMP, type transition leave to go to some of these programs, right? Yes. So if you're thinking way ahead and you're still in this, you can be part of your transition program. So Rosie, what about you? Well, I mean, I think that Mirza mentioned it. I, I guess the best advice that I have is start arming yourself with information. Knowledge is power. And I think it's through the connection and through going through the, our website and connecting with resources and networking and talking, you're going to start getting that information. It's better to collect the information first so that you know what steps need to come next. Uh, the last thing you want to do is like just start in something you have nothing, no familiarity with or anything like that. Um, certainly, uh, I think through these con connections, you can certainly get a lot of advice, uh, get a lot of knowledge in particular. So, That's awesome. Well, Mirza and Rosie, thanks for being here. Share some phenomenal information. Anybody listening, I highly encourage you 
look up Syracuse University, go to the IVMF, all, look, check out all their programs and all the research data and everything else. It's a phenomenal resource and like, you know, it's all out there available to the public. So it's good stuff. You guys are doing great things. Keep up the good work and hey, what? probably have you on the show again next year. <laughs> Definitely. Awesome. I hope so. <laughs> all right. Thanks. Take Thanks care. Keep entrepreneuring. You bet. All right. We're out. <laughs>